Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Rancho Catati High School fi Field in uh, lovely Rancho uh, Rona Park, California. Yeah, for the second of two WCLL uh, semifinal championship games, where earlier today we saw Cal down Sonoma State to earn the first part in Sunday's, or the first place in Sunday's final. Uh, tonight we're looking for a pretty decent matchup, Mike Lantier. Uh, between the Cal Poly Mustangs and the Santa Clara Broncos. What we like to say, horse-on-horse horse action here <laughs> in uh, Rancho Catati Field. Uh, Mike, this is not an unusual place for Cal Poly to be. Seven of nine years, they've not only been in this final, uh, or in this championship weekend, but they've actually won it. So this is uh, not uncharted territory for them. Not at all. These, uh, these Mustangs have uh, been all over the uh, WCLL uh, hosted tournaments, and they've uh, they always bring an amazing team, uh, very large team. They they carry 40 plus on that roster, and they will use every single player. Yeah, you had a you had an opportunity to talk to head coach Bobby DeBrio yep. for the game. What were some of the things you guys discussed? Well, he's uh, he's very much interested in, in transition, both on the offense and uh, obviously transition defense. Uh, they had a, a very tight one. They lost to uh, the Broncos uh, by one uh, about a month ago. And he is very concerned about how fast and uh, as much as they push it, uh, they do not stall. They don't they don't yellow uh, uh, and, and move players on and off. They go right at the cage. Right. And so well, as familiar as this is to the, uh, the Cal Poly Mustangs, this is new territory for the Santa Clara Broncos. We had a had chance to had talk to head coach Greg Mingus before the game, and he is uh, excited to be here, but not satisfied to be here. Not at all. He's uh, he's building a culture. You know, he's been doing this, uh, you know, for about five years. Um, prior to that, they've had uh, losing records and, and, and no sniff uh, of postseason play. So this is a big deal for him. He recognizes that. Uh, his players recognize that. And uh, we're going to see a, a very feisty Bronco squad. And a feisty squad that is led by a, a, a freshman sensation in Keaton Collier, Mike. Uh, tell me about, you've, you've coached Keaton in the past. We've watched him play a, it's a dynamic box game with the Calilax All-Stars up in Canada. Uh, this kid has, is something special. Yeah, he is the real deal, and he comes from uh, quite a nice little pedigree uh, in the, key, uh, the Collier family. Uh, father uh, grew up in Syracuse, played lacrosse. Uh, he attended Archbishop Midi High School in San Jose. He's 6'2". He's easily pushing 230. Uh, he is a playmaker. And he has 49 points on the season, Mike. That's 41 goals matched with 8 assists. He is definitely going to be the go-to threat tonight for the Santa Clara uh, offense, and you know for sure. He had three against uh, Cal Poly the first time they played, so you know that Cal Poly is going to have an eye on him. Absolutely, absolutely. But don't don't count out number 20, uh, Connor Lencioni. Uh, he's a Dale South product, uh, very well coached, and uh, he is a firecracker. When he is running on all four full cylinders, he is a man on a mission. Four full cylinders, and we are underway, and somebody's going to get possession of this ball eventually, and it is Santa Clara. Number three, Hayden McDonald with the ground ball. And that means it's possession time for the Broncos. And a nice little check right off the gate wow. by the Cal Poly defense, really giving the business down there behind. But and, uh, kind of Santa Clara will retain possession. Yeah, uh, Paul Kunzel there uh, making a quick uh, quick whistle. And if I know Kunzel, he's going to have a quick whistle here. He doesn't like shenanigans, Paul. He does not like shenanigans at all. No. Uh, this is a tight crew. Uh, they've been reffing together in the South Bay. Uh, but we're going to see them call it very tight. Yeah. All right. So Santa Clara getting their first look at the goal. Number three, McDonald rolls it back. Ball hits oh the my. turf. And that is a giveaway. Number 28, Buckley not able to come up with it. And a quick wow. transition. Here comes Cal Poly looking across the way. And a oh! missed opportunity there by 23, Ben Smith. But Cal Poly retains possession on what could have been a real quick start for that Mustangs offense. Yeah, we had just talked about how much the Broncos push uh, push the ball. Maybe uh, Coach DeBreo basically told him, hey, let, let's flip the, flip the switch on them. Yeah, 19 behind the net. Biggers. Kind of like that last name. Biggers, lots of ways you can play with that one, playing bigger than normal. <laughs> and there we go, Stickney up top, moving across the top, a lefty Oop. shot. Maybe not quite the velocity that he wanted to have on it. Goes out of bounds, but Cal Poly maintained, retains possession. Biggers behind the net. You know, the... Uh, Moves the off the pick, moving it up the wing. 
The Broncos goalie, uh, Luke Miller, uh, absolute stalwart. I mean, he is he is the uh, the epitome of their defensive squad. But they do have a, a man in, in reserve who has done quite well for them, number 23, uh, Matt Lincioni. Yeah, I'm telling you, 40 in the net for the Broncos. That's a big fella in there. You're going to have to... You're going to have to find the spots. Well, not so easy with that kind of size in the net. Well, Stickney moves down the alley, shoots wide left. Sun is now down here in Rancho uh, at Rancho Cotati Stadium, so not quite as blinding as it was in, in our previous game. Uh, so a little easier on the goalies this time around. No lasers in the eyeballs, as it were. Cal Poly up at the top, dodging across the middle, and back behind. Working the ball around methodically, looking for their opportunities. I'm going to try to move it up the top here. Burkow with the ball, puts it right back. And here comes a little dodge down the alley again. 18. Stickney tries again. Same result. Cal Poly sticking with it. So, you know, fairly settled offense we're seeing there. They look getting their shots. No rushing around. No nonsense, Mike. Not at all. They're, this is a statistic game. It's a statistic game, pardon me. They're going to put their shots on and they're just going to see what goes. I'm trying to, still trying to figure out what a pastistic is. Well, it's a, uh, oh, and just as we said it, number Nick, six. Nick Sando moving right to left. A nice little shot right across the top there. Probably about 15 yards out. Yep. Good bounce shot off stick side to the goalie. And uh, Cal Poly draws first blood. Can I say it for the first time this game? Fundamentally sound. That was fundamentally yes. sound. Look, at you know, you got to like that. If you're, if you're a head coach, Bobby... As you know, I'd like to know him. <laughs> you got to be pleased with that. It's a settled offense. You got three, four shots on it, and you finally came up with your number. Good protection. Good settled offense for the Cal Poly Mustangs out of the gate. There down. you go. Back to the dot. Let's see if Santa Clara can answer. Nice little face off with the long pole there. That was number 47, I think. 44. I don't know. Number 42. I take that I think back. It was 42. There's two of them on our roster yeah, here. I'm so we're say it's Jim Krause. Right. Okay. That's what I'm going with. All right. Tell me I'm wrong. All right. But anyways, we, despite we, the disagreement, Santa Clara now has the ball settled on offense, working it behind. He's pressured a lot of high pressure from Santa, the Cal Poly off defense, but that's creating some opportunities here. And Santa Clara turns out they want none of that business. Keaton Collier being shaded pretty heavily in the middle. He's looking for it. Pops back out top and as the ball works behind. You know the Santa Clara is just itching it to get the call here, and he is being shadowed. Great defense by uh, the Mustangs here. Yep, they are really playing aggressive out there. Clearly, they had a defensive plan they wanted to execute. They were not going to give Santa Clara a whole lot of daylight. All right, so Padawee. Rolls it across the top, bang back down to X. Santa Clara's going to take another bite at this apple and see what they can come up with here. Big strong move to the hole, quickly doubled. There's Collier, watch him. He will yeah. use some of those Canadian moves with the one hand slide underneath and he'll bring it right back around. Yeah, you can almost smell the back bacon on him. <laughs> Tim Hortons. <laughs> Have to make a stop later. Absolutely. Now, you know, again, those are the kinds of mistakes that they're not going to be able to afford a lot of. Maybe to maintain that possession, North Shea Danforth out of Campolindo. Beautiful Moraga. That's a name I remember from way back in the youth lacrosse days. Yes. Shea Danforth. Goalie midfielder, if I recall. Ah, very good knowledge. Yeah. You know, I might be making that up, though. <laughs> People on the internet, check me on that one. I'm sure we'll have some uh, some activity on the uh, Twitter Godfrey's on Godfrey's working it behind. Still dancing. I tell you, pretty impressive showing by this Cal Poly defense yeah. so far. And they're not giving a whole lot of looks here for Santa Clara. They are pushing out. They are daring Santa Clara to yeah. make those one-on-one -on -one moves. And they are chopping wood. Big stick. And I tell you, number 12, Lou Sugo sticks his dome in there and makes a save. Working it behind. Dick, Dale Duffy. Looking around, finds goal, finds him up top to, to Potawi. Just wide. Just wide. That a boy goalie. Heads up play right there, you know, Mike. You know, you love to see that from your goalie early on. That's a that's a possession that just didn't do much. Not a lot of love right there for uh, you know your Santa Clara offense. Not at all. No. And 
Cal Love's, Poly works the clear. Love seeing the goalies work hard on, on that. Recognize, obviously, they didn't have any backup. Mike, are you giving a little goalie love there? I do. I do love my goalies. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pronounce uh, it's Anthony Epstein. Epps? Epstein? <laughs> Help me out, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a public school education worker. Phonetically unsound right there. Right there. <laughs> Phonetically unsound. Oh, dear. I think even the Cal, Cal Poly Mustangs were so upset oh, by that pronunciation. They're, they're they, gave, they gave the ball back, uh, and they take it right back again. A pretty nice play <laughs> by number five. Sage and Gawkale out of New Coast, Newport Coast, California. Broncos work it behind with 97, Goslin. It's going to start working the ball around as they work a little... Get, the, get their personnel to where they want them to be. Over to 17. Reno. Reno back up top. Is Reno feeling like a gambling man, I guess, is the question. And right now he looks like that. Answer to that question is, yep, puts it behind. Nice dodge down the alley. Tries to find X. Surveying. like the way he's playing with his head up. Back up top. Dodge down the alley. Back over to 19. Opportunity missed Biggers there. Just missed. But he manages to pick it up. Right, so Reno back with the ball. Over to Henriksen. Henriksen moves it behind. Wants to hammer along, get a little pick. See if he's going to get a little motion. Quick up the side. Rolls back. Oh, Great the back over check. the shoulder back check by number 14, Del Biagio. I think this is a pretty even match right now, uh, Dave. I'm, I'm seeing both teams just kind of going, listen, no one has established themselves yet, but uh, it's it's a back and forth. I like it. I'm telling you, so far, clears have been efficient. I mean, unlike the last game we saw, Mike, there was nope. a lot of trouble on the clears. These teams have both been pretty efficient once they pick up the ball in the defensive zone and moving it to transitioning back to offense. Here you go, Collier. You're going to maybe make something happen here. He is moving around, a little flip to number 20's teammate, Leah Lincioni. Ooh. Uh, not the shot that they wanted, but so you know what? good possession, gets the ball back. There we go. Oh, shot number 28, Brian Buckley off the top of the dome. So far, that's zero saves or one save for the Cal Poly goalie, two saves for the defense. Absolutely. Hayden Thayer putting his dome right in the middle of that shot. There's a lot of dome action going on out here, and as a guy who lives in a dome, I can appreciate that. <laughs> Gee, People are listening on the Internet, I'll explain it later. Santa Clara maintaining possession, trying to find if they can get a good look. Ooh, close on that. Uh, Collier almost got Rolls called for the moving in. pick. Oh. Yeah. Well, Duffy tried to get in there and try to sneak one in. He's, you can tell he's a little bit of a rat in there. Not afraid to get his hands dirty. Back out top to 22. Oh, excuse me, 28. Buckley moves it behind. Back to X. Interesting now. Collier's got a short stick on him. Let's see if they uh, they get it to him. Usually he's going to be guarded by Tooney. So says uh, Coach DeBreo, but uh, the SI product. But now we've got a switch. Collier trying to direct traffic out there. He knows spins inside that double, and he is double. But that is a big fellow to try to double on a regular basis. No, oh, we got a... Uh, yeah, Collier directing traffic. Work, works it back. Ooh, tries a low angle shot. I don't know who that was over there on the far side, but not a lot going to happen on that. Not so much. All right, so Santa Clara maintaining possession. You really start. Nice save by the keeper. Not a high percentage shot for Santa Clara's number 20, Connor Leacone. Leacione. So Len Kiani. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, Len Kiani family. Butcher. Yeah, there's two of them there, out there. Oh, my God. There's two of them. I'm going to yep. say that more than once. Yep. Keeper uh, and, uh, and short stick. Well, clearly, the Len Kiani family is going to have a lot to complain about at the end of this broadcast. Apologies. Go, Mitch. Anyway, back to the action after this embarrassing tirade about name pronunciation. <laughs> Bit of a chill in the air, Dave. A bit of chill in the air. Players want to keep moving. I know the bench is going to be bumming here in a little bit. We've got Cal Poly on offense as they start working the ball around on their end of the zone. Five minutes left in the first quarter here. Teams are definitely feeling each other out a little bit. We've had a couple of long offensive possessions, but so far only one goal to show for it. Right, ball's back behind. And a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one isolation here. Number 22, Ben Berko oh, oh. going for it. Oh, oh a little goalie. BTB action. Biggers. Oh. Ah. 
And Santa Clara with the unforced error. Was that Biggers that did the behind the back there? It was. It was. It was. It was a rushed, rush the, shot. The Biggers the better. The Biggers the better. Here he goes again. Okay. Oh. Nice can save. Of, can of corn for the goalie. Miller nice saved by Miller. Couldn't control the rebound though, and now we've got a little bit of chaos going on. And they get it back to him here now for a controlled clear. Santa Clara looking up the field. Quickly up to number seven, Dave Danforth. Again, the Moraga product. Go, it's definitely crowded at midfield there, but a nice find by Danforth to complete the clear. And now we're in the box. But again, that pressure Mustang defense, they're just not giving an inch. This is the key matchup we're looking at. This is Collier versus Tooney. Yep. Oh, and so far, it's looking like Tooney got the upper hand of that individual one-on-one -on -one battle. Henry Godfrey on the on the pickup there. That was a nice uh, heads up play by him to you know keep the ball for the Broncos. It'll be interesting to see. You know, I'm sure Collier's. You there, there you go. There you go. Uh oh, ref getting it. <laughs> Santa Clara <laughs> puts, puts the biscuit in the basket. You can thank Brian Buckley for that. Although he's going to have to answer to a frustrated referee oh. after a little bit no of action. Christmas card the there. Look at this. Watch this. Boom and oh. then kabow. Oh, hey. You know what, you, you don't treat your zebras with respect, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to find yourself on the wrong end of a couple of calls, accidental or intentional. All right, and that knots the score up one all here with 334 left to go here in the first quarter. All tied up between the Santa Clara Broncos and your Cal Poly Mustangs. And these teams, Mike Lantier, I'd say they're pretty battling pretty evenly here in the early going. I like it. It's what we were expecting, but uh, here we go. Quick move here by the Mustangs. It's a uh, ah. nice little pinch and pop Wait by a minute. face off Fogo. Cal Poly 13. Ryan oh. Brown came up with a Wait quick. Wait a minute. We've got are. a discrepancy here. Refs are not aligned. You know, it's interesting. In the previous is that, game. Is that the Mike, crime dog? Steve Walker? Previous game, we saw such great synchronicity between the referees. It's interesting now to go to a crew that. That's no, Console. Seemed to, oh, boy. Yeah. Paul Console, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not familiar with him, um, a, a very accomplished Ooh. referee. And boy, that is now. Late flag, but we got it. Well, laundry's on the field. <laughs> Santa Clara somehow, number three. Hayden McDonald managed to beat the one on four. Took it right in the teeth. Took too. it right in the choppers and got laundry out of it. So. Uh, Santa Clara is going to have an opportunity here. Mm -hmm. well, let's see if they can capitalize early on. Oh! Uh, oh! Off the ball off the crossbar. Wow! It. Uh, you know, Mike, that reminded me of a kids' game I played, Ganip Ganop, when I was a kid. That ball used to fly. Four balls flying back and forth. You yes. had to make sure you, it's bouncing all over the place. A little bit of chaos. That's what I saw out there. I liked it. Can you spell that, Dave? Uh, Mike, it's actually pretty easy. You just <laughs> ping pong backwards. <laughs> Ganip. Gun up. Oh, great stuff. All right, either way. Yeah, there you go. See, ball right off the crossbar. Carrying a little bit of chaos. Gives Cal Poly the possession, but unfortunately now they're down a man. So Santa Clara gets the first man up opportunity of the game. All tied up here, a one all. And let's see if they can capitalize on the opportunity. Um, that is not how you're going to capitalize on the opportunity. And you, you don't give Jack Tooney that, 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 that opportunity. Jack Tooney's going to absolutely hoover that ball right into a stick, and it's on It's on for San Cal Poly. And Cal Poly now down a man, but they've got it in the box. And they're threatening. Cal Santa Clara desperately trying to double the ball. But right now, Cal Poly's playing keep away, but unfortunately they just popped it back over, and now they're over the line. So Santa Clara gets it back, although I don't know how much time they have left on the man up, Mike. Uh, I'm going to say that we are all even right here. Yeah. Two minutes left to go here in the yeah, first nice quarter of action, and we are looking at two balanced lacrosse teams going at it. And Cal Poly, but that's to be expected. This is a one-goal game the last time these two teams played. Yep. And that, this is exactly what both coaches talked about, the unsettled, what's going to happen, who's going to respond. Uh, I think it's a concern for both teams right now. It was a little sloppy, but that's okay. And Levitan came up with the ball on the defensive end, and they are here come the Mustangs. Quick look inside, oh, boy. With a nice goal, nice finish by Sachin Gockhale out of Newport Coast, California. And a nice feed inside. Absolutely. Absolutely knew, knew exactly where to be. Comes around. 
That almost was like a warm-up goal for him. Yeah, now that is transition lacrosse at its finest. And I tell you, when we were talking to Coach DeBreu beforehand, he knew that transition goals were going to be important today. Absolutely, and uh, it looks like the, the Mustangs are kind of settling down a little bit. They're getting into their rhythm. Two one. Cal Poly over Santa Clara. One thirty seven left to go here in the first first quarter. We're being heckled live here in the stadium, ladies and gentlemen, if you can believe it. The quality of pronouncing that you're hearing. And right back Sutchin. comes Santa Clara. Liam Henderson. Oh big save. A big save by Mel, uh Efton the keeper. Efstein the keeper, excuse me. I would like to just shorten it up with Epi. Nice grab by number 24 there to keep it in bounds. Kyle Whitney. You know, the Broncos need to make a... Yep. There we go. I heard it from the stands, and I'm going to agree with it up here. That's a good call, Coach. Things are getting a little bit squirrely, and with one minute left to go in the first quarter, let's take a little time out and talk about it. Do you agree with that, Mike? I do. Uh, so listen, this is uh, this is definitely shaping up to be a battle. They're going to run. They're going to run, and the depth is probably going to favor Cal Poly, being that they have that large bench. But br the Broncos will use a lot of their guys, but they depend on a core of about 10 to 11 players to really kind of dictate what they want to do. So far, I've been pretty impressed with the defense on the Cal Poly side of the ball, Mike. Not going to lie. They've uh, really put the shackles on the number one threat, Keaton Collier, the freshman. And it'll be interesting to see how he responds. Uh, you know, he's obviously a mature player beyond his years, but, you know, first-year player up in college level, you know, that can get you when you expect to be scoring goals, that can that can weigh on a player. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's it's definitely uh, something that, that a young player has got to go through. But, you know, he's seen this this team before. Uh, I'm sure that he matched up with Tooney. I was not there with the game, I believe, was down at Cal Poly. Um, and this is just going to be a situation where he's got to determine, okay, it's time for me to go. Yeah, it's interesting that they called success. I mean, they held him to a hat trick. I yeah. mean, that's how impactful Keaton Collier has yeah. been for the Santa Clara, Santa Clara Broncos. Yes. Uh, you know, he has, uh, he's been a force, and it's been fun to watch, and it's fun to experience. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, yeah, that box lacrosse experience has played paid dividends for him. Yeah, he was, a, he was a, one of uh, the prodigies of Shaden Santos. Um, brought in early, uh, started young. I think he was a novice, which is... Uh, you know, somewhere in the U9, U, U10 uh, level, and played all the way up to uh, almost the junior level, which is like, uh, you know, a college, collegiate level. This kid has got it going on, and he's got a brother at USC, and uh, those those two together on a summer team, amazing, fun to watch. That makes you th me think you're thinking about starting a summer team, Mike. Uh, is, that a, is that a recruiting player? Are you allowed to do this as a broadcaster? You know what? I'm going to have to go to our attorneys on that one. But uh, I think uh, green light. Yes, green light. We're okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank God we had these. You know, Ooh. ladies and gentlemen, when you're like this, you got to make sure you have in-booth attorneys. Yes. They come in handy all the time. All right. But we're ready to get back to the action. The timeout is over. And here come the Mustangs. Okay. Stickney with the ball. Moves it over back behind. There goes Biggers. Working around the net. Goalie came pretty far out, unusually so. Yeah. Boy, the lumber is flying over there in the corner. Nice ground ball by number 97, Goslin. We have a broken stick on the field. And all of a sudden, Mustangs find themselves with an unexpected man up as the player has to leave immediately. By rule. It's almost like they didn't see it. Paul Kunzel doing a great job, crew chief, to get that uh, potential weapon. Off the turf. Well, if anybody knows about dealing with that, that would be Paul Kunzel. He's had to do the face-off circle with Tim Booth before, and my God, that's like dealing with a live animal. Mm -hmm. Here comes Cal Poly, moving the ball back behind after the dodge down the alley. Good ball movement by the Mustangs right now. They smell it. And here comes the finish. Oh. Just missed the net. Number five, Sachin Gokhale. He's the main offensive threat just a bit off the mark right there. He's going to want that one back. Oh. oh, boy, and another great look by the Mustangs. They're getting some pieces right there. Ben Benkow from Woodbridge High School out of Irvine, California, had a look there. It was bouncing around like a pinball in the middle there, Mike. Yeah, this I tell you what, this is, uh, this is a good start. Um, and if you're Greg Mangus right now, you're going, all right, uh, uh, we're, we're all right here. We're in, we're in the zone, but uh, we've got to start making some things happen offensively. Yeah, you know, this is, a, like we talked about earlier, the last time these two teams met, 
And it was a one-goal game. Um, it, anything to think you think that was five to six, right? So you, both teams knew that coming in here that this was going to be a brawl. Well, that's a grind. It's worth noting that uh, uh, Cal Poly lost that game five to six, so they were clearly looking for a little bit of revenge. Both teams fully aware that this is going to be a brawl. Yeah, and that's uh, that's exactly what uh, Bobby DeBreu does not want. Um, you know, he he does not want this to drag out. He wants to establish a lead and and roll into Sunday uh, to face Cal. Right. You don't want to have necessarily take all the gas out of the tank after this game when you know that if you're successful, you have a you know a Cal team that's had a huge year this year and a relatively easy go in their semifinal game. Yeah, and untouched in uh, league play. So I mean, they are definitely uh, Goliath. Um, I, you know, right now, I think Cal Poly's got a little bit more of the veteran uh, advantage here, but uh, don't count Greg Mangus out. He's uh, he was a player himself still, still playing in the uh, the senior leagues. Uh, you know, we were talking to him about that beforehand, and you could tell there was a glow of pride about uh, still playing in the Masters Division up in Lake Tahoe. Absolutely, I, I played with him a couple years back up in Tahoe, and. Uh, he is. Uh, does he play attack? He does. That yeah. is a big pair of attackmen. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I love to, to camp out on the crease, launch chair, the whole thing. But uh, he is. Uh, he, once he gets moving, that choo-choo train is hard to stop. <laughs> He's got the big mouth. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminds me of little birdie from Syracuse. I think maybe the next broadcasting gig I'm going to do is going to probably be trying. If I can get you and Mangus down on uh, on uh, attack for uh, Lake, I, I'll be there. I'll strap a GoPro onto my head and follow the two around like a like a uh, paparazzo. <laughs> Uh, that'll be fun. All right, well, we're getting ready to start the second quarter, ladies and gentlemen. It's score in this second of two semifinal games for the Western Collegiate Lacrosse League. Cal Poly Mustangs leading 2-1 to one in a pretty evenly matched first quarter. And I'll tell you what, from what we've seen, um, you know, I, I can't expect that there's going to be any different as we roll through this game. Well, it all starts at the faceoff, X, so let's see, uh, let's see what we got. And we're right back at it here. No rest for the weary as the up-and-down action gets ready to continue. And we're off. Well, just couldn't come up with the handle on the face-off there, and we're still battling. Number 13 comes up with a Ryan Brown, and he is scooting. Gets the pedestrian down, gets the ball down low, stays on the field. Nice face-off by the Cal Poly Mustangs. I think that's going to be the matchup we're going to see, too, is it's going to be Kraus versus uh, that gentleman. <laughs> that fine gentleman? That fine gentleman. All right. So that Hunter's scholar athlete. Hunter's got the ball, and they continue to move it down the right side and back to X. Oh, left side. My left, your right. Back up top. Cal Poly looking to get their uh, personnel package settled in, set up their half-field offense. Now, Dave, I don't want to uh, tip tip the cap of uh, Cal Poly, but they do have a secret weapon. Brandon Kiefer, That's number true. 10. That's true. That's Hunter with the shot. Uh, it's nice save by, by Santa Clara goalie, Miller. Santa Clara with a nice clear, and they are in the box. As number 30 makes a nice move. Uh, a low angle shot by Leonardo. Leonardo. That's probably not what Coach was hoping for. Pulled the trigger probably a little too early yeah. on a low angle shot like that. You know, I even had trouble in the word statistics, and I'm going to do it again. But uh, <laughs> that, that is definitely not you want to stay away from that one. The shot selection that, that we want to see no. from the Broncos. And that's kind of frustrating, too. You come up with a nice clear like that and come down, pop yeah. the ball. Well, we oh. have a flag, and I did not see or w know and why. From the far side from the ball, too, Coach which is not a common thing, and we're out of the box, so I guess we're going to have a stoppage of play. We got a timeout, looks like. So we'll try to figure out this, uh, this flag. Well, I'm assuming it had something to do with a little bit of stick work on the far side of the field. Paul hmm. Kunzel did not like what he saw. Hmm. Head coach, or excuse me, head referee. Paul Kunzel was looking dashing on the sidelines, actually. When he we went over and had a chance to talk to him and catch up, find out about how refing has been going. Yeah. He saw Mike Lantier walking across the field, and I think there was probably a little twitch in his eye as he saw you coming. A little bit. I think, you know, uh, we used to jaw a lot when he was uh, ref in the MLL. Uh, you know, he didn't like uh, my attitude uh, in particular then as a player, but uh, I think as a friend now, uh, we're special. Yeah. 
<laughs> this just goes to show you, everybody, the lion can lay with the lamb. We had a technical foul here. I, I did not get the hand signal. Is that something you do with Paul, too? You guys got a special hand signals you're we, shooting back and forth? We do. It's uh, it's a combination of some Native American uh, you know, signal calling I and uh, Honor the game, Mike. In, in the international yeah. language. I understand. Well, whatever it was, whatever mystery is left to be unsolved here, Cal Poly, we see, is going to have their first man-up opportunity of the game. A chance to see what they have drawn up for this game and a chance to take a two-goal lead as we are at 13-12 left here in the second quarter. Cal Poly moving the ball around. Over to Stickney. Back up top. Swinging the ball around. Moving it quickly. Uh, it's a little bit off the mark right there, though, but Cal Poly is able to maintain possession. Maybe a little tight. Some of these passes are causing the oh guys boy. to stretch out. And there's a big, big gun guys. by Ben Burkow. Right around the 20-yard marker, he's really got a chance to get his hands free and step into that mm -hmm. one. The Woodbridge product out of uh, Irvine. Nice little feed over to the top. Big crow hop, and bam, just like that, that ball is in the hoop. Great job by the replay crew over there. Thanks, fellas. Yep. There you go, a little senior leadership. Yep. Our compadres here at NorCal Sports TV, LLC, brave enough to put us on the air. We'll be forever grateful. <laughs> They'll be forever cursing the day. Mm -hmm. All right, Cal Poly now staked to a 3-1 lead, 12.52 left to go in the second quarter. And Brown they again. come right up with the face-off again. Brian Brown been pretty effective from the dot. Oh! Just missed the outside of the net. Santa Clara dodged a bullet there. Yeah. And now they've got to start answer, thinking about answering. A big, long across the field. Oh, boy, that could have been an hospital pass. <laughs> Hope he's got Kaiser. Again, that Cal Poly defense just not giving an inch. That stick work is just surgical. That was a bit much. <laughs> Fans are liking it. They really want to see some punishing activity. Danforth, I think, is at about the point where he's looking forward to getting rid of the ball. Works it behind. Still covered closely by number 99, Hoblitzel. And causes the turnover. And here comes Cal Poly. Wow, great defense by the Cal Poly crew. Absolutely. That was uh, textbook. Uh, How Blitzel. Yep. I mean, just delivering relentless checks. Definitely distracted uh, the Bronco there. And then... Just forgot where he was. Yeah. yeah. That was a lot to handle. Danforth just uh, looked like he wanted to get rid of it at some point there. And then, oh, but then again, trying to force the issue, and that's out of bounds. But they're saying it's off Santa Clara, so the Mustangs retain the ball. They must know something we don't. I think they do. All right, here comes the, here come the Mustangs, the wild Mustangs right now. This is the same unit, so uh, I, we have yet to see the second and third line. No, nope. cutting across the top, feeds it back over to number, looks like 37 from up here. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe 39, I can't tell. Maybe neither. Being a little more patient right now, taking a good step, moving down the alley. Number Ooh, 10 just I misses saved. the shot. Brandon Kiefer. I told you. The local product. Out of Casa Grande High School. Yeah, our second uh, game featuring a Casa Grande graduate. Local Petaluma High School. But quite the uh, lacrosse program. Sort of a machine up here in the North Bay. Yeah. Got to credit Miller there, though. He got he definitely got a little piece of that. Just enough. Be called a kick save in hockey. Yeah. Might be feeling that one on the ankle. Get the ice ready, coach. 19 behind the net. Biggers going back and forth, trying to find an opening. Rolling it back and forth. He's covered pretty handy. Stick out. Works it up top to Sando. Sando moves it over to the top. Here comes a dive down the left side of the net. And that was uh, the feed. It just got a little loose. But a nice ground ball by number six. Uh, number six. Six. Sando. Mm-hmm. Ladies Amazing. and gentlemen, my eyes, i got 50-year-old eyes. You're, you're, <laughs> you're lucky I can see anybody out there. And it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> Gets around. Oh, another nice great save, save, Miller. Gawkale, you know, the leading scorer for these Cal Poly Mustangs. It was um, equal to the task, though, was Miller. 
Let's see if we can get Collier uh, moving and grooving. I mean, Dan Forth turnovers, is, turnovers, Dan Forth turnovers. Is, Dan Forth is struggling a little bit right now. Well, good check back, though. Let's see if we can read, get another possession. And Oh, here comes Cal Poly right down the gut. Number 22, Ben Burkow. That's his in second. The unsettled play down in the Broncos' end, and that makes it 4 1 Mustangs. And that kind of unsettled, chaotic, scattershot kind of clear comes back to bite the Broncos, Mike. Right downtown Main Street. That was the uh, light parade at Disneyland. I mean, give, <laughs> give, give Burkow credit. I mean, he, you know, he collected that ball, bounced off a couple guys, and was able to finish. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Broncos need to put a body on him. It's that simple. He's a big fellow, but... You're not uh, inciting violence, are you, Mike? Not at all, no. It's a part of the game, and uh, I, I promote it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we verge into PG-13 territory. This was one of those moments. Beautiful night, though, Dave. Yeah, nice. Wind, winds uh, settled down. But, I, but you you mark my words, Mike. We're going to start seeing some slipping going on out here as this yeah. field starts getting a little wet. You're correct. All right, so here comes Santa Clara. Got a face-off win. We'll see if they can clear it out of their own defensive zone, though, as they were forced to retreat. A little bit of patience, but you know what? The, the clock is going to start being an issue for here because, you know, they have to get it into the opposite, opposite end of the field, into the box relatively soon, Mike. Yes. I believe it's 90 seconds, and uh, we got we got to get it in quick here. And there you go. Managed to box it. Number 28 well. coming up with Brian Buckley right there was able to get it in. Buckley's behind the net and starts moving the ball around. Moves it up to number three, McDonald. And there's Danforth again. Probably looking forward and seeing if he can get make a bit of, bit of a contributor right here. Danforth dancing around. Nothing doing. Moves it back behind. The 29, Godfrey. Sliding it up the side now. On the far side of the field from us. As the chill sets in here up at Rancho Katati High School. Dale Duffy. Duffy. Yeah. Duffy, and he's not able to hold on to it, and that's a turnover. Here come the Mustangs rolling down the field, and it looks like a slow break. And here it comes off across Whoa. the field, not able to control that one. Might have been a little quick on the quick stick attempt there, Coach Mike. Yes, you know, I just was thinking that the, that was a Bronco uh, missed opportunity, which, they, I mean, you know, you get that one there, you cut it to 4-2, uh, you know, about eight minutes to go. Things are different now. Cal Poly completely in control. Uh, you know, it's interesting, right? You have coaches always preaching, you know, don't let that ball get stuck in your stick. That's actually one of those moments where it probably could have helped to have a little bit of time Absolutely. with Absolutely. No one wants to be a black hole, but let me tell you. Make sure that biscuit's in control before you try to get rid of it again. Nice save by Miller again so far. You know, he's been, as, as Coach Bobby DeBrew said, you know, he was saved a ton of shots the last time these two teams played. Uh, instrumental. Yep, and he's uh, he's been equal to the task here a couple of times. He's had a couple of nice saves there. Yeah, and you it's, just it's don't been want to busy get, down there. Well, you don't want to get roughed up too. I mean, you know, you, you if you see oh. twenty or thirty shots, and bang, boy, you know, Mike, there that is again. Uh, that's a heck of a shot and play right there. There's Gockhale with the finish off of a nice feed. I think that one was from Biggers. And uh, that's his second tonight. Yeah, I'll take that back. That was from Reno. Point blank, not much you can do if you're Miller there. You're just, you know, you're hoping for the best. No. Good look, good feed. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Mike, don't look up, but this game is now 5-1 to one Mustangs. I don't know why I want you to keep your head down, but, you know, let's I, face Well, it. I always do. Yeah. I always do. When I'm around you, you never know what can happen. Uh, this is getting personal. <laughs> well, so right now, 7-12 left in the second quarter. 5-1 Mustangs. And, you know, I, I suspect that Coach Mingus, if they score again here, he may be wanting to think about a timeout. This, yeah, I'm telling you, is that Ryan Brown? Is yeah, you know, I was just thinking up there. if uh, it would be a really good matchup with uh, is it Galenti and Cal uh, versus this uh, Ryan Brown. This is going to be interesting. But, hey, plenty of time left here. There's a lot of little... lacrosse before we need to start talking about that one, Coach Mike. I'm not sure Coach Greg Mingus would be appreciating that kind yeah, of soothsaying. He won't pass to me in Tahoe, that's all. <laughs> okay, here comes Reno. Big body, goes off to the wing, though. They're going to start looking for another personnel change here. All right, it looks like the Mustangs are in a bit of a yellow here as they get their package ready. Oh, 
Another doorstep look for the Mustangs. There will be a push from behind, and that will be must. That will be Bronco ball. And Levitan. Zach the man, Levitan. Mm-hmm. Pally boy, Palo Alto. All right, local product makes good. Miller's just trying to distribute the ball, and this, I think, is starting to become an important possession for the Broncos, right? You know, they've let a three or four go in, and there's another sloppy clear. Give it right back. And here come the Mustangs again. See if they're going to exploit this opportunity as Gockhale has the ball, pushes it right back, bounce pass back bounce to Gockhale. Pass. There you go. And all of a sudden, the time of possession is beginning to dramatically favor the Mustangs. 22 up top, Benko. He's been having a good game so far. I've called his name quite a bit. Down to the right side of the cage it goes, and then back behind as the Mustangs start to work out. They've really spread the field here, Coach Mike. Well, you got to. I mean, uh, you're going to nurse this lead a little bit. You're looking for more, but uh, go ahead. Force this uh, this Bronco squad to come out and, and play you. Tire them out. And here they we go. I believe they've got Kiefer. some one-on-one -on -one matchups here. Brandon Kiefer shoots from behind. Oh, and that's a turnover. Oh, Coach Mike, you didn't like to see that from the former progeny. No. <laughs> <laughs> your ladies and gentlemen, you're lucky you just didn't yell in your ear. Yeah. Your, your telephone close, might have exploded close. if you're watching us there. The safe word was Bumblebee. On NorCal Sports TV Network. I almost had to call Bumblebee there, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. All right, and hopefully Santa Clara can make a miss make amends for some previous clearing challenges and here they come in the offensive zone. Now it'll be interesting to see they know they want to push that ball they like to go fast but you almost want them to have a, a solid possession here. Yeah and I just want to see Collier here let's go. And uh, again oh, nice way to track it down. Sloppy ball movement Tally. right now by the Broncos. Right. way up top. Save, he's got an opportunity, goes down the alley, quick double by the Mustangs. Turns it back up top and then swung over to the far side. Across the crease, and that is intercepted not, again not by not the Mustangs. Tooney's watch. Uh, Tooney's having himself a game right there. Yeah. As he moves down the field, works it back to the opposite side. As the Mustangs try to clear. And there they are, number seven, Ev Hunter, going across. Hunter out of Mission Viejo. And they get the ball back to X. The ball up the alley now, getting it back up to Mord's midfield. Here comes Gambling Man Reno, moves it over to seven again. That's Hunter, Evan Hunter. Hunter down the alley, back to X. Now we're doing some seeing some skip passes from the Mustangs, so they're starting to feel a little bit and their confidence grows. Low angle shot from Reno. Yeah, I'm not liking that angle at all. Tough angle, nobody there to back it up, so uh, well, a bit I'll of an oversight. Have, have a chance here to we get oh, back into boy, this game. Those, those long passes always make me nervous. It's... Look out. Oh, editorializing. <laughs> Looks like the Broncos will be able to get the ball in the box. Well, not yet, though. And there's yeah. a quick double. Got to tee it back. It was, again, this Mustang defense, pretty tenacious out here, Mike. Oh, wait. Oh, mm. And that shot by number three, McDonald, bounced a little on that. Tra train was early, Mike. A little bit. That was a, uh, well, wait a minute. You know, there's that timeout. Mangus, beautiful move. You know, I, I, you know what? I, I agree with that move, Coach Mike. You know, we hadn't seen a lot from the Santa Clara offense thus far. You know, the Cal Poly Mustang defense has been a wet blanket of reality for them. <laughs> Draping over the players, chopping the wood, sound fundamental defense. Uh, I think Coach Mangus wants to take a timeout and say, hey, look. Yeah, they're scattered. I mean, they, they just they need to settle down, take a deep breath, reset, figure out what they want to do, and execute. Uh, I know it sounds like any other sport, but let me tell you something. He separates the two two squads, offense, defense. Let's uh, let, let's assume that there's some some tone in, in that uh, in that huddle right now. And, and let's just say, you know, Mike, there's there's three minutes left here in the half, right? So this is an important possession for Santa Clara. They know that they want to go into the halftime with a with a little positive mo, a little a little shamrock, a little uh, you know a lucky horseshoe. Uh, you know, and maybe this is the thing that can fashion that bit of luck. 
uh, out of uh, what to this point has been kind of luckless. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it up. Well, I mean, Buckley's the only one that's uh, that's stung the net yet. You know, tonight for the Broncos, uh, you know, we've anticipated the Collier machine, and you know, Tooney's done a really good job of keeping him quiet. No, I know. But uh, we gotta get we gotta get these people involved. I mean, it's uh, there. Mengus was very clear. There's there's a lot of guns on his squad, but uh, it seems as though the, the Mustangs are stifling them. Three minutes left here. Santa Santa Clara Broncos will have the ball at X with the Mustangs of Cal Poly leading five to one uh, in what may be shaping up to be an early critical possession in this game. And they're underway. The whistle. Paul Kunzel blows the whistle, and off we go. And I gotta be honest with you, that's the kind of thing that is gonna make Greg Mingus pull out whatever's left of his hair. <laughs> now. Cal Santa Clara is moving that ball. McDonald just gets rid of it. Yeah, I think they just back. need they need to get uh, the ball around the horn. Everyone get comfortable again, and then initiate their offense. Uh, again, you're doing you're seeing the Mustangs do a pretty darn good job of locking off the adjacents and making it tough for that Santa Clara team to move that ball. Luckily, moving the ball up top, swings it around. Again, the ball movement not quite as crisp as I think they're hoping, and trying to force it on the inside to Collier, but fortunately. Mustangs yeah. are definitely Donald. moving to double quickly. Uh, the Broncos need to recognize that. Here comes a Collier right down the middle, and he shoots about one quarter underhand in an angle that you don't see a lot of shots come from. It just drifts over the top of the net. Yeah, Buckley, uh, if Johnny Christmas and De La Salle sees this, uh, this tape, he's going to be very frustrated with that uh, technique. Let's see, now here we go. we got the ball is back up top. Dan Forth with it, dancing around the top. Switches to left, switches to right. He's got his head up. He is looking to create right now. Boy, Santa, uh, Cal Poly just getting those sticks up in the lanes too, just inches away from mm -hmm. making another interception. Carler's got to free, free himself up. He's, he's, he's hesitant right now. I'm not sure why. That defense again. Boy, those yep. sticks again just watch right through the passing lanes. Dan Forth looking at Craig, calling his name a lot. Ball spent a lot of time in his stick today. He's trying to play the role of quarterback with Collier, basically draped and doubled in the middle. A little frustration now maybe setting in for this Santa Clara offense. About a minute to go here. Duffy behind. Oh, and we've got a... Duffy working his man. Shot clock on. Ooh, Duffy with the shot and yeah, pretty Not good bad. save I there mean, by uh, you know, Being contested, he got a pretty good, decent shot off there. Yeah, but a little a turnover easier on the read. clear. And Santa Clara gets another bite at the apple. Dan Forth. 45 seconds. Really, you know, so you know Coach Mangus is hankering for a uh, mm -hmm. goal right here. I wouldn't be surprised if he called another timeout. I, I, you know, come on, guys. Get something going. Uh oh, you know, no rest for the weary here. Coach Mike working two jobs here right now. Well, you know, I am kind of a popular guy on uh, on my phone. Duffy's unable to get rid of him, and Cal, Cal Poly defense is it, just suffocating the Broncos right now. And there is no need to push this 13 ball. seconds left. Let's see if Santa Clara, uh, excuse me, Cal Poly tries to push it. They made it up. Oh, a nice stop from Gavin. It go out of bounds. Nice little hockey move right there. Yeah. Let's just say that I think that's probably going to be the end of the quarter. Or half, excuse me. Oh, <laughs> boy. If that thing wasn't rattling around in the stick. Stinger's eyes were as big Stinger's as could be. <laughs> oh, Coach Mike Clay. Ah. Yeah. Well done, sir, with that word play. And that is the end of your first half of uh, this semifinal game for the Western Collegiate Lacrosse League's semifinal game number two. With the let's see, Cal Poly Mustangs up 5-1 over the Broncos of the University of Santa Clara. Coach Mike Lantier, what did you see in that first half that surprised you, amazed you, stunned you, or otherwise struck you dumb? Well, that leaves a lot out there, Dave. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, I was excited at the beginning because it was definitely uh, fast-paced. Uh, you know, we were running and gunning, and then things just kind of fell by the wayside at the Broncos. They couldn't figure out what they wanted to do. Um, you know, they were looking to get it to their guys. Kyle Pauly clearly has the book on Collier. They know they know what he's he's capable of. So they put Tooney on him, uh, and then just 
some sloppy play. You know, I, I think Cal Poly is showing, uh, you know, a little bit more of their, uh, uh, their finesse and, and quality coaching. Um, so tall order for the Broncos to get out of this hole. It's not a big one, but they can do it. Do you think the Cal Poly legacy of being in this postseason tournament has bearing on what you're seeing right now versus the youth and uh, inexperience of Santa Clara? Well, yes, a fantastic point. Um, you, you know, been there, been there, been there, Cal Poly. Broncos, you know, first time in a long time. Uh, jitters, maybe. Uh, not the depth they're looking to, to compete against a, a Cal Poly, a juggernaut. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, let's uh, also say, you know, hey, look, green and gold goes a long way in these neighborhood, this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Casa Grande High School program up here, a true powerhouse, also green and gold. So maybe the Cal... Pauly Mustangs are feeding off of the local legacy of the Casa Grande colors and that are also so popular up in these neck of the woods. Ladies and gentlemen, their score at halftime, 5-1 with Cal Poly Mustangs over the Santa Clara Broncos. Uh, this is Dave Almy. I am doing your play-by-play -play duties, and I'm joined by head coach Mike Lantier with on the uh, color announcing, and we will be back shortly for second half action to see if uh, Santa Clara can climb black back in this second of two semifinal games to see who's going to match up with the University of California Golden Bears for the finals on Sunday. You bet.
All right, so we are back at Rancho Catati High School Stadium in Rohnert Park, California for the second half of this second of two Western Collegiate Lacrosse League semifinal championship games. Mm. You have semifinal championship game? Is that a thing? Or are you just a semifinal game? Or semifinal. Semifinal game. Yeah. Uh, regardless of the terminology, we are currently have the uh, Cal Poly Mustangs up 5-1 over the Santa Clara Broncos uh, in a what started off as a pretty tightly contested match, Mike Lantier, but that second quarter, I think it's fair to say, was pretty much all Mustangs. Yeah, I was excited. I thought I thought the Broncos came out uh, hot, and I thought, wow, this would be exactly the game plan they're they're hoping to have. Uh, run with them, keep keep up, deny them any opportunities. But then, you know, the Mustangs just showed. Guess what? We're here. We're here to stay. Uh, we've been here a ton. Uh, we're looking for Sunday. So if you're Coach Greg Mangus of the Broncos, you're down four to an obviously experienced Mustang team. What message are you trying to send to your players in that huddle? Uh, don't don't go away from what we've done to get here, but we got to get our people uh, going here. You know, Buckley's, uh, like I said, the only one that's put one in the, in the net so far. We haven't seen Collier pretty much initiate much at all. Uh, which I know he's capable of. You and I both have seen it. Uh, but there's a, there's, there's a, a blevy of talent here. <laughs> How about that? Oh, I'm not sure I know what a blevy is. That's a, that's a term we use in the firefighting service. A but, blevy? Uh, uh, you sure it's not a bevy? Uh, no, it's a blevy. It's a boiling liquid evaporation <laughs> uh, explosion. Uh, well, we'll see if a boiling liquid me. I'm, hoping, uh, I'm hoping that'll tickle some of the Twitter people out there to, to get involved. <laughs> and it looks like an explosion here at the midfield <laughs> as the faceoff goes back and forth. Patali picks it up, goes screaming down the middle, and the ball gets lost. The Stevenson the end, so. product, home of uh, Joel Holland, by the way. Oh, my God. Jolton Joel Holland yep. of the fabled Cardinal Newman program up here in Santa Rosa, California. Played uh, collegially at Navy with my brother and then uh, decided that Oregon was where he would finish his uh, Well, you know what they education. say, Mike. Oregon is the Navy of the West. It is. <laughs> it very much is. All right. Cal Poly on the clear. Goalie's making it all the way to half field and he's decided yeah, he's had this. enough. He's just going to do this himself as Miller makes his way down. Happy going for it. Can he have it? Oh, wow. and that's a long run back. It if is. you live by the sword, you can die by the sword. Let's see what happens. No call, no. Now, this would bring up an interesting rule. You cannot get in the pipe as a defenseman. You have to be outside the crease. But you know what? Good hustle. Yeah. Live. <laughs> Missed opportunity there, but boy. Boy, good hustle by Epstein to get back there, boy. <laughs> that is not a goalie. You know, they spend their time at practice lounging around like elephant seals on a rock, <laughs> not doing the sprints. So maybe they do things a little differently at Cal Poly. <laughs> That is a reference that I have yet I have ever heard, I think, in lacrosse, but that's awesome. Well, there's a blavy of them to come, so There you worry. go. <laughs> Santa Clara trying desperately to squeeze that ball into spaces. I don't think are there, and I mean, that's a turnover on offense. Uh -oh. But the Body Cal contact. Poly Here we go. just surrounded uh, by Broncos. but Can't catch a break. Well, you know, too much contact after the loose ball. Here comes the Mustangs back up the field. Quick little dodge at the midfield. And here we go as Cal Poly gets it into the offensive zone and settles in for a possession. Working the ball back to X. Mm -hmm. Almost methodical, waiting for their personnel to get the ones we want in. That's Burkow behind. He's called his number a couple of times today. Nice little dodge down the, from X. Yeah, disruption of the shot there. That's not bad uh, defense by the Broncos. Chambers had a look at it, but good closing defense by the Broncos forces it wide. Biggers. Over to number 22, Burkow. Working his way around the crease. Quick double. Can't quite get stick on the ball, and here comes a pass across oh, the crease. Oh, gorgeous. Wow. Gorgeous. <laughs> you know, Great job. Doug Goslin probably could have stepped, stayed there for another couple minutes before the defense was able yeah. to recover. That's a but heck of a But he froze pass. everybody with the, the, the step like he was going to shoot. Everyone froze. Uh-oh. Yeah. Here comes the heater. 
Yeah. And it was let's just let's a jump take off. another look at that one again because that was uh, that's a pretty nice feed to a pass. I mean, look at him; he's all alone <laughs> on the far gorgeous. side of that crease, and that's where the goalie comes around and takes a look and just says something like, "Oh, expletive." <laughs> You're welcome, FCC. Managed to keep that one to myself. <laughs> exactly. Goslin. Yeah. Out of Utah. Well, you know, he was second on the team. Second on the team with 32 points. That's 21 goals and 11 assists. Yeah. So probably no surprise that he found the put the biscuit in the back of the basket. Is it Gayleaf? Galif? Sam? Patrick Henry? <laughs> That's his high school day. Okay. I thought you were talking about someone who's on third string midfield. <laughs> okay, Mustangs back on the attack after another faceoff win again. Story of the two games today, Mike, is controlling the faceoff, and look at that. You're controlling the tempo of the game. Yeah, who would have thunk it? You know, it's almost like it's um, you know, written law somewhere. I bet you Steve Stenerson is at home in Baltimore right now, just happy as can be because everything he's taught the U.S. lacrosse program to be is, is happening here tonight on the West Coast. Everything? And if you believe that, I got a bridge for sale. It's yeah, big and well. red, sort of orange, just down south of here. Shot wide, as Biggers puts it to the puts it to the left of the net. But Mustangs are there to back it up, so they are going to be back on the attack here again. And Herrickson moving the ball top, gets it back. You can tell he's looking. Got a little contact on the stick, but number 97, Goslin, is there to retrieve the dirty laundry. Ball up top. Very fluid Must by the uh, Mustangs yeah, right Mustangs now. Yeah, Mustangs are really moving the ball around crispy there. We'll dodge at X. Oh, we got some trippage on the net. Oh! Miller takes one off the, yeah, the nice, thigh. Nice save by Miller. USDA choice there. Beef. I hope my voice doesn't sound like the PA system out here, boy. That, that's rough sound. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, that's definitely not Dolby. All right, <laughs> that's definitely not Dolby. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not supposed to laugh. Serious know, business, ladies and gentlemen. All right, lock it up. Mustangs, you lock it up. Attacking. <laughs> and again, moving the ball around really fluidly right now. Must you know the Broncos defense content to hang back and let them do that, but. And they go. Let's see if they're able to control. Right, here you go. Let's try see to the get big the man Reno take, take a run. Yeah. He thought about it for a second. I don't know. Maybe are you linked into him? No, I just like the name Reno. Yeah. Gamble man? Yeah, he's a big fella, like myself. Is he the biggest little fella in the world? I uh, could be. Oh, good Ooh, check nice over check. the shoulder by number 17, Lombardi. But again, Cal Poly able to retain possession. Broncos are getting their opportunities. They're forcing the issue on a couple, but... A couple of these offensive possessions, but just can't seem to get the handle on the ball when it hits the turf. Cal Poly up 6-1 right now. 9.53 left there in the goes. third. Charles Reno. Double. Goslin oh, oh, that lost track of where it was for a minute there. Hard check coming in there from uh, 42, Gilbertson. A low shot over there by number 19, Biggers. I think he might have stepped on the guy who was playing defender and rolled that ankle just a little bit. Here comes Goslin from behind, gets around, but just wide of the net again. Yeah. That time Santa Clara was able to get there and they get the ball back in possession after a long offensive set. Yeah, they were definitely the getting a little frustrated there. And here you know, they come. They we'll see feisty. if they can push that ball, but Santa Clara is able to get back and get it back on, uh, back on offense. Godfrey with the ball. I want to see my collier. You are just a little over stimulated. <laughs> I just I think I think this is something that they need to get him involved in. I mean, yeah. he cannot be this quiet. This is crazy. Yeah. We knew going in that he was going to be a key to their offense and so far the key has stayed out of luck. Yeah. And that's the uh, kind of turnover that they just cannot have in this game. And then there you go. They step over the line as well. So now, you know, look at Mingus has got to be getting a little bit cranky here. I mean, that's <sighs> just a couple of mistakes. Oh, a oh, baby. big but You know, you can't call that anything except standing your ground. Wow, Gosling took the hit uh, like a champ. Got, gets up and just keeps playing. And Love it. Sticks are Good flying discipline. out there. It's like a remake of a Sword and Sandals movie. <laughs> Still not there. And 
Boom. Number 14 is able Jack Levitan. Zach the man Levitan comes up with the ball. Oh! Oh, boy. That one's going to be a Guess tough who? one to swallow. Big Ben Burkow. Yep, for the hat trick. Right there. And this is where Santa Clara has going to have to dig deep if they want to continue their season. Mm -hmm. It is now 7-1 to one Cal Poly over Santa Clara. Mustangs beating up on the Broncos for the moment. A six-goal lead here with 8.15 left in the third quarter. Mike, this is starting to ring a little similar mm -hmm. to what we saw in the first game. Yeah, sadly, uh, we're, we're just getting uh, one team overpowering another here. But uh, i got to tell you, my, my interest has peaked with Ben Burkow. I am going to be doing some research on Woodbridge out of Irvine. Uh, I like this kid. He is gutty. And he, you know, he's not afraid to go to the cage. Not afraid to take contact. He's got a hat trick tonight. So I'll tell you about another kid who's playing gutty. It's Ryan Brown on the faceoff. Boy, he is dominating out there right now. Here we and go. here Long come pull. the Mustangs running wild. Almost want to have the... Rolling Stones, Wild Horses playing in the background out here, the way that they're running around. <laughs> Good tune. Thank you. Oh, nice play by the goalie. Yeah, Miller got involved. Miller stuck that peg out there and was able to interrupt the passing lane. Does himself a favor. And here come the Mustangs. Liam Henderson getting the ball back on offense. He might be, that'd be the first time we, we mentioned his name tonight. Second time I actually mentioned it? earlier because uh, I had to look up the top of my sheet because it's written in because he's not in the actual roster. Well, I blame the economy on that, Dave. Well, you don't want to waste that printer ink, Mike. All right, Santa Clara. I think it's getting safe to say desperately in need of some offensive success here. And again, look at that Cal Poly defense just playing way the heck out daring. Oh, Collier was there in the slot. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. One on one offense through six or seven people is not going to find you a whole lot of success. No. No. This, is, uh, this, this has got to frustrate you. If you're a Bronco attackman, it, it, you know, you have done nothing but watch Cal Poly possess the ball. And when you do get a, a sniff at it, something happens. Somebody misses a, a pass, runs through into three guys, who knows, but it's got to be frustrating. Yeah. Uh, the Mustangs now get back to. What they've been doing all day, possessing the ball. Keeping it out of the hands of some of the dangerous players on the Santa Clara side, including our personal favorite, Keaton Collier. Well, possession is nine-tenths of the law, Dave. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, again, having the attorneys in the booth here with us is pretty helpful. Oh, they, they're frowning me. They're, they're, they're shaking me off. Mm, all right. Okay, keep all it to right. yourself then. All right. You got Brandon Kiefer back on there. Again, the local products shifting the ball around. They have him playing at the top. Kid's got wheels. Ball looks back up. a real nice family, too. And that is picked off Here on we a go. nice Broncos play by opportunity. Santa Clara Broncos defender. Getting that stick up in the lane. That was number four, Liam Villano. Mm -hmm. Long stick midfielder. Out of uh, Madison, New Jersey, played at Delbert. I think they're known for their high school basketball. Well, apparently, trying to change that up. And here we go. Again, ah. the shackles are on, but a lucky bounce puts it right in the hands of... Oh! Boy, you know, we have seen a couple of long pole goals out here today. That one by number 14, Chase Del Biagio. The Bellarmine Bell. You don't see too many long poles rolling out of the X position, do you, Coach Mike? Well, if you've been coached by uh, Big Pat, Pat Bennett down there, <laughs> Bellarmine. Let's take a look at this one. Just <laughs> Joe Romano is going to be proud on that one. You know, he got full extension with that stick, boy. The goalie I thought was there. I'm, I'm a, still haven't figured out how that went in. But well, next thing you know, we're going to start seeing specialists with the long pole come playing at X. So, you know, something we haven't seen. Figure. Well, and that puts us at seven to two. Only the second tally by the Broncos in this game, and won by a long pole, no less, out of the X. So, again, things you think you're never going to see, and once again, number 13, Ryan Brown. Wins that face-off circle. A quick shot by the Mustangs goes out of bounds, and we backed it up by number 23. That is Ben Smith. Out of Granite Bay, California. Beautiful country. That is a, a, a quite a high school program they've built up there at Granite Bay. It is one big high school. 
Yeah. Like 15 million people go there. <laughs> well, I think Judge was leading that uh, that section of NCS. Yeah, no, but uh, they've grown. Uh, I remember they when we started coaching in the youth level, they were just getting started. And boy, they have produced some great players. Mm -hmm. Oh, and off the right post back. by number 97, Goslin just missed it. Lucky break for the must for the Broncos. Oh, Miller. And I'm not sure what we're going to call there, but they are going to call maybe a trip. Well, not a trip because that would be box time. <laughs> And that ball is getting a little... There he goes. Ball's getting saucy. Come on, big fella. And here comes Keaton Collier. Let's see if he's able to dial something up. He is definitely telling folks to move along, but then makes a quick pass. Back to number 20. Oh, Only there he is. Oh, man. Ah, darn it. Lincoln Like I said, there's two of them. Oh! Nice try by Collier. Stepping. Trying some artistic movement, uh, but apparently it was in the crease. He hit the hot lava. You can see maybe a little frustration setting in there for Collier. Mm -hmm. Four minutes to go here. The third. And the Mustangs back on possession. So things are not totally desperate yet for the Broncos, but maybe starting to smell that way just a little bit. You know, I think the expectations of a Greg Mangus, are, you know, are basically just, hey, we're glad to be here. Let's see what we can do come out of this, you know, keep building on that program. Yeah. But they're not out of this. I mean, things can change in a, in a second. Well, you know? I've been unfortunately on a receiving end of a couple of five-goal leads that evaporated quicker than yeah. uh, than I would have liked. Nice attempt by that. And boy, there's an absolute uh, zinger. And another From hat number trick. five, Sachin Gawkale out of Newport Coast in Corona Del Mar High School. And that is, uh, you know, Five yards out with a full head of steam on that shot. Not a lot you're going to do with it, particularly when it's put in the corner like that. You know, they have him showing up as a 5'9", uh, 160. Uh, but he is definitely... Put all of himself into that one. Like a 6'6", six, six, you know, 300 pounder. I mean, he is just he's, like... With his hat here tonight, that puts him at 25 goals on the year for this Mustangs program. He's a beast. Really amazing distribution on point scoring on uh, on the Mustangs part. Got six kids with double figures in their goals with their points totals this year. Yeah, Bobby likes to spread it around. Yep. It takes a village. You realize you're on first name basis with Coach oh, DeBrow. Big B? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know. I uh, head down to St. Louis about twice a year for training, and, uh, you know, we hang out. Yeah, I understand how it is. So we got 2.59 left to go in the third quarter. Eight to two Mustangs. Um, and they possess the ball right now up at midfield. And right now are content to take their time with it. And why not? They've been having a lot of success with it so far. Back up top to number six. That's Sando. Kiefer. Back over to number ten, Kiefer. The local boy. Thought about it for a minute. He did. Zings it over at us. Now he's put some weight on, and uh, I think his shot has uh, increased in speed for sure. I put some weight on, too. It's done nothing for my shot velocity. <laughs> Kiefer swings the ball back over to Sando. Sando's looking down the alley. He's got just back to the middle of the field. He's got good coverage by number nine, Jacobs. And the Mustangs reset a little bit. Try it again. Kiefer with the ball out top. The Mustangs start to shift. Forced back out again. Turns it back up top. Back over to Sando. Sando back up to number 22, Berkow. Berkow's going to shift a little bit. He's been dangerous all night. Oh, just lost it. Tragaser lost it, but Mustangs are able to recover. With 135 left in the quarter, I hate to see you get it like that and then just toss it away. I think that's the second time that, that Kiefer and uh, Gokhail have not connected. All right, so still... Del Biagio with the ball. He's the one who had the goal from X earlier. Danforth takes one up around yeah. the dome, and that That's definitely earns some laundry. Nice defense by the Mustangs, pushing it down the alley. As number three, Villano, is sent outside. Been a pretty clean game so far. Yeah. Nice. 
Danforth is going to try to see if he can sneak one by here. He's got his head up, though. He's looking to feed as he is covered like a wet rag right now on defense, though. That has been the story of the game for Danforth as he throws it away. But it looks like the Broncos will have a man up opportunity here. Looks like it's an unnecessary roughness on number three. Yeah, if I remember what happened, I think Danforth caught one up around the head and shoulders. Yeah. And I'm not talking dandruff shampoo here. I'm talking about a good piece of lumber right up around the ear hole. Is it Tregesser? Dominic Tregesser in the sin bin. Mm. All right, well, we talked about opportunities. Let's see what uh, the Bronx can do here. We've got about a one-minute penalty, about a three-second differential from the game clock with one minute left to go in the third quarter. Broncos really would like to try to put one on the board here. And Duffy wasn't able to handle that one. Hands up, we got a push. Stays Broncos. Mm -hmm. Lucky break. About 40 seconds left in this quarter. There we go. You know they're, who they're probably going to try to take a look for here. And they missed it in the middle. Len Keone was looking open there for a bit, but that window closed pretty quickly. Broncos have about 25 seconds left on the in the period to make something happen. Get it down to X. Tough angle shot by number seven, Danforth. Effie oh. put his whole face into that one. That was awesome. Yeah. He definitely got a little leap on it too, yeah, didn't he? Did. Can't be faint of heart if you're a goalie, that's for sure. There we go. Getting across the top. Danforth looking for it. Moving the ball around. Five seconds. Collier with the ball behind. And I think he's just going to run out of time, Mike. Oh! Oh, and a nice, and a nice stop save. by Epstein at the buzzer. Probably would have counted had it gone in. I think so, but it definitely is... Uh, Gives a little more momentum to the Mustangs heading into the fourth. You know, that's a goalie who looks like he uses Goalie IQ, the best goalie iPad app out there, Goalie IQ. Uh, I've, I've seen the product. It's outstanding, developed by uh, a guy who definitely knows the mindset of a goalie. Um, check it out at the App Store. Um, you know, for the, for the seven people that are out there listening right now, A, we love you. Thanks for staying with us through one and three quarters games of lacrosse. But B... If you like a goalie, if you love a goalie, then do him a favor and get him Goalie IQ, the best iPad app for your lacrosse goalies. Well, I know that Steve Sanderson's staying up late. It's 12:17 uh, his time in Baltimore, but I think he's very interested in the app, from what I understand. <laughs> it's actually being used by the University of Denver right now. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, just in case. So, with 15 minutes left to go in this game, the second of two semifinal games. Oh, we're getting a little. Getting a little wisdom. I don't understand what he's saying, so I'm going to. Yeah. I have to break off. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, so, we need tale some of two we need teams. Some tale of two teams. So, here we are, Rancho Cotati High School, Rohnert Park, California. We're in the second of two semifinal games for the Western Collegiate Lacrosse League. Earlier in the day, we saw Cal down Sonoma State in dominant fashion. And right now we're seeing the uh, Cal Poly Mustangs sort of have the same effect right now on the Santa Clara Broncos. Uh, they are currently leading the games 8-2. to two. A Six goal differential is a pretty big one, but certainly not insurmountable. I think what we need to see here, Coach Mike, though, is like we need to see some offense on the heart of the Broncos. Yeah, they, just, they have just been stuffy. They cannot get something going. Uh, but, hey, got 15 minutes to make a difference. Let's see what happens. Looking forward to it. You know, and credit, credit that Cal Poly defense too, Mike. They have just suffocated mm -hmm. and stopped anything that the Broncos have tried to get going here tonight. Yeah, super athletic. Uh, these kids know how to play. They play together. They communicate really, really well. And, of course, that goalie in there, Epi, he is just fantastic. Well, nice face-off win for the Broncos. That is definitely one of the ways they wanted to get the game started. But he is having a hard time getting rid of that ball right now. Number 42, Gilbertson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. That is a turnover. Ooh. And there it is. Nice ground ball by number three to 33, Tooney, who has uh, been having a typically spectacular game. Yeah. And right down the gut comes Cal Poly, and uh, then they throw it away. So, 
sloppy play here at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Teams are probably tired and will probably be living a little chilly. As the chill has set an uncharacteristic mm -hmm. spring chill as we head into May here in Northern California. Maybe cause some tight players. But right now we're not seeing um, not seeing great looking lacrosse here right now to start the fourth quarter. Not so much. But, you know, Mustangs had a long trip. Takes about five hours to get up here. So, uh, you know, getting off a bus. Definitely showing they have the ability. Uh-oh, Collier's going to get one here. Late hit on the goalie. That made some of that frustration we were talking about yeah. earlier. Cal Poly is going to try to capitalize. Another long pole makes a move, but that's going to head out of bounds. But Cal Poly will be up a man. And that is definitely not the way that Santa Clara wanted to start this yeah. fourth quarter, being a man down. Is that frustration talking there, right, Coach Mike? 100%. 100%. Well, Coach Manga still has two timeouts in his pocket, I believe. Maybe thinking about using one sooner than later to talk to this young team, settle them down. Don't let the stage be bigger than the moment. But for the time being, they are a man down, and they're going to have to deal with a Cal Poly offense that's been pretty effective tonight. Gawkale will have the ball to the right of the cage. Cal Poly gets their personnel in, and here we go. 13-32 left in the game. And Gockale surveys what he's got. Let's see what Cal Poly wants to do from a man-up standpoint. They start to move the ball around. Sliding across. So we've got a little hitch in their offense right now. Let's see, there it goes. Quick shot and a nice goal. Hush my mouth. No, no hitch there, Evan Hunter. Get a nice pass from behind from Jim. Goslin. Junior out of Mission Viejo just says, uh, you know, I think it's my time. i take one. Yeah, he, he got one. I was starting to think it looked a little clunky over there on the old man up, but <laughs> what do I know? Not very much. <laughs> That's not true, Dave. Well done, Cal Poly Mustangs. Mm -hmm. But that puts the game now at 9-2 to two Cal Poly over Santa Clara. 13-10 left in the game. And uh, I suffice it to say that I would say that uh, the sense of urgency should probably fall on Santa Clara if they're hoping to make it run for it here. Oh, for sure. For sure. Another well, action going on geez, in the NCAA Another face-off win for Cal Poly's Ryan Brown, who has been nothing short of dominant, but then the ball goes right back to Santa Clara. And something that I completely missed, but you all are watching on TV, so you could probably chime in and text me and let me know what the hell just happened. Here's Connor Lencioni. Yeah, Connor, I have been butchering your last name all night long. I apologize for that. Broncos uh -oh. skip pass, and, and they put it in. Wow. Number one Duffy with a skip pass across the middle. All right, so no, still some fight left in these Broncos. I guess so. I mean, it almost looked like uh, the, you know, the Mustangs were asleep. It was just like, whoop, and then whoop. And a little golf shot right there from yeah. Duffy. I learned. Yep. Well, it was actually more of a two iron, Mike. I would say that it stayed low to the ground. Nine iron might have gone up and elevated into the net. So you're telling me I have bad eyes. I'm telling you that you may just have your golf clubs mixed up. Ah, oh, dang it. I don't know. All right, so that's nine to three now. Let's see if the Broncos can add to that total and start to make a little run here and make this game a little interesting. Back to the faceoff circle, but right now the big order for the uh, Broncos is to solve number 13, Ryan Brown. And they haven't made a change. Kraus is still in, so. And what do you know? In what has become almost boringly redundant, Brown comes up with the ball again. Just a tremendous performance by the Fogo. as the Mustangs retain possession now. And the clock is definitely in their favor. Not that they want to slow down. 12 minutes is a lot of time in the sport of lacrosse. But with a six-goal lead, they can afford to be patient and wait for the right shot. Working the ball behind. Goslin surveys. And works it back down to the close side to Gockhale. Spins it back up top. Mustangs attacking from the midfield. Down the alley. Again, taking their time, being patient with the ball right now, Mike. 
I love this movement, though. It's just it's, it's fun to watch. You know, It's almost like the Mustang players love it, too. I mean, they're moving it hot. They're keeping it hot. But they're looking for chances. You know, boom. There's one right there. And uh, number three, Dominic Tregressor had a look right there in the middle. He just let that one rip. In that kind of situation, it's almost placement more than power. Mm -hmm. Oh, and boy, they just... <laughs> The defense yeah. was not able to hold on to that one and had another opportunity just missed by the Mustangs as they start trying to get the ball settled on offense after things picked up pace there a little bit, Mike. Yeah, Broncos look a little tired. They're not even contesting any kind of a ground ball. Right, we got the balls up top. Number 22, Burkow going down the alley. Has a look at it. Miller. Looks like he uh, either hit the post or a piece of Miller. I couldn't I, tell which one. I don't one. know, but I, I just want to give it to Miller because he's played so well. Because he's a goalie. Well. Yeah, he's a goalie, and he's just played so well. Yeah. All right. Nice move play by the Broncos. Good aggressive defense there finally at the end. And they're now going to have an opportunity to try to put the ball on offense. Time is of the offense, though. 10.52 left in the game. Big, long crossfield pass. All right. Number 32. Bradley Hall crosses midfield with the ball, and now that's out of bounds. Outstanding work there by the Cal Poly Lugo. Sorry, Sugo, Lou Sugo. I mean, step for step, stick right in the lane. That has been the story of this Mustang defense today, yeah. and the Broncos have just not been able to solve it. Mustangs up top. Pressing from the midfield as they set up their offense. There they go, waiting for their personnel package to get in there right now. Number seven, Hunter with the ball. He's already tallied one earlier tonight. Back across, finding those open lanes right now as they spread out that Broncos defense to create some lanes for both dodging and shooting. Goslin behind the net. Gets around. Oh, pipe shot. And another pipe shot. Boy, <laughs> you think these guys are plumbers the number of times they work with the pipes. <laughs> Right back on offense, too, boy. They do not skip a beat. No, no unsettled, no looking around like what the heck just happened. Right back at, right back to work. Mm. There you go, Hunter. Let one fly there, and that spins out of bounds, and Santa Clara is able to come up with it because they were closer to the ball. And they work the ball upfield. Danforth playing captain in the middle of the field there. He's been getting a lot of playing time tonight. I suppose that's been the norm. It's the Campolino product. It makes good. Harrickson with the ball now. There you go. Nice little clear. Yep. All of a sudden, there we go. Broncos Start on the ball, but again, <laughs> that defense is not giving an inch. No. And he is looking. That is number 34 right there. He is Joseph Lamferry. Whoa. Collier, his first Probably shot, easy save there. That's maybe his first shot of the second half, I think. And you know that that was not going to be uh, a recipe for success for them. Collier's only had one shot in the second half. Exactly. Oh, what a beautiful. Uh, right back. Oh, and a miss Man. on the doorstep by number 44, Sam Galef. Levitan just under pressure. Doesn't matter. He gets it. Beautiful pass down to the attack. Low attackman. And it really starts to feel right now, Coach Mike, like Mustangs are just rolling this game forward I mean yeah yeah it's definitely uh, a feel of okay guys uh, the gas pedal we got it uh, let's still have some fun though I mean you know every game there's something to, 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 to improve upon you know Cal's gonna be oh, well, keeper having some trouble there just like that. you know just when we say the gas pedal's down uh, the the brake gets tapped I almost threw my hat on the ground there oh, but, boy uh, but that's, again I have the backup pass in case you need one <laughs> 8.13 left here to go. Oh, well, yeah, to get, let's get the seconds, thirds, and fourths in. Well, I, I think time. also it's nice to see the Broncos' defense start to play with a little bit more intensity. Miller, that one nice go. Save. Miller, again, equal to the task. Oh, look at that. Look at that. What a nose for the ball. Goslin. Oh, well, watch this. This is fantastic. I mean, just... Perfect time. Ball comes out, doesn't touch the goalie. And boom. Yeah. He is on the doorstep. Little shimmy shake. And that's that. You know what? Poor Miller. You hate to see that. The kid's been having a heck of a game. He's been playing great. He's coming up with some big saves. 
And then just like that, that's the one he's going to remember. I'll yeah, tell you no, that right and, now. And he's clearly, you know, upset. He's like, all right, this this game is just not going anywhere my way. Cal Poly leading Santa Clara 10 to 3, 7:52 left in the game in the fourth quarter. And uh, Cal Poly goes with a different faceoff guy, giving Ryan Brown a break. But the result, yeah, the result differs. And the Broncos come up with it. Nice job. Can you score seven goals in seven minutes and 35 seconds? Well, Maybe. I think that works out to goal every minute and 1.34 seconds. You got to make sure you capture that, stay, keep a handle on that ball. I'm not sure if that made it to the keeper or not. But we'll give uh, F. Steen the save because we're generous to our goalies. Bron uh, we've got Mustangs on the clear. Broncos got a decent ride going. No urgency here. time. Yeah, we've Not seen Esteen go once. Was he willing yeah. to go again? Uh, great, great move there. The and look Lundberg. out. Yep. Well, ah. nice closing job by number 11 for Santa Clara. Ryan Del Buccanon. Biagio providing the pressure there. Was that Del, Del Biagio? Yeah. It was Del Biagio. Yeah. I, I stand corrected. I'm glad one of us can count. That is one on four, one on five. And this is not what Broncos want to do. Let's move the ball. 20. Brian Buckley manages to get it out of traffic. I don't like this either. No, and that's Kyle stick. Jacobs right now is really working hard, boy. Get These Broncos are really working to get the ball into the box. That one got away from number 29, Henry Godfrey. Broncos retain possession after a little confusion. You heard it in the crowd in front of us. It was pretty sure Cal, Cal Poly had that ball. Turns out not to be the case. But the situation is dire for the Broncos. We've got 16, 6 minutes, 12 seconds left to go. Duffy's trying to get something going. Feeds it over. Oh. oh and just couldn't, just couldn't close it. Hayden McDonald yeah. there on the far side just couldn't get that done. I thought that was a sure thing, but... You know, that's kind of been the story for the Broncos tonight. Yeah. Everything seems to be a little snake bit. Mm -hmm. But, again, hey. kudos to the, the Cal Poly defense. They've been making life miserable for those guys out oh, for there. For sure, yeah. I mean, ju just the, the check selection of these long bolts. I mean, it's just relentless. But they know exactly the, the sequence they want to throw. Yeah. And things are just not going the Broncos' way right now. You know, another turnover, unforced. That's just not going to win you a lot of lacrosse games like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but I think the countdown is on here. Yeah. But there, I just said it. Did you? I did. All right. It's time for some Mustang action. It's something we've been seeing a lot of. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about Paul Kunstel again. I mean, he's just looking. <laughs> spry let's out let's there. not. Let's not. <laughs> Gockel's just sitting behind the net now, surveying. Hate to see this pressure. Goalie keeping his stick down low. Yeah, but this is a great you know, cat and mouse game going behind the net there. Oh. Nice job by Miller. Full face uh, save there, I think, you by Miller. The chesty, I think. Was it? Yeah. Dang it. Danforth. LASIK. Right there, it's like I won before, but a nice looking clear here by the Broncos. Let's we'll see if they can capitalize on the transition. Collier closed fourth quickly on to by Tooney. Again, I think we've said that a few times tonight. Yeah, we have. There, Brandon behind. Nice pick. But nothing, nothing looking like it's happening right there. Broncos work it back up to the top. Ancioni. Spinning, moving. New Jersey product gets it down low. Yeah, Broncos are moving the ball really well right now. And that one hey. just pops in. Hey! hey. That, uh, That's something for the effort, huh? Brian Buckley with a nice little downtown underhand shot. De La Salle. A 10-4, Mike. Might be a little too little too late. I think so. Yeah. 4.09 left to go here in the game. Cal Poly 10, Santa Clara 4 in this semifinal WCLL matchup between what can only be called a powerhouse, uh, Cal Poly. No, I mean, uh, you know, winning seven of the last nine drips to this uh, tournament. Uh, they are definitely, probably, no. 
<laughs> they definitely probably know. No, I, I, I'm not I, going I, there I, because you know what? At four minutes left, I yeah. can't start talking about the next game. It's just it's it's unprofessional. Well, and I'm not going to have it, Dave. I'm you know, I, you are the consummate professional, Mike. Oh, Miller again, great save. Yeah. All right, and right back up. We'll see if they can get into transition. But again, that ride has been awful tough today. In yeah, my short time with Jim Nance, you know, he he always made a point of saying that you don't you don't look ahead in the game. It's just it's just not what you do. And like the Buddhists say, Mike, be in the now. Yeah. Hello, friends. <laughs> it's too soon. <laughs> All right, Broncos will now have the ball on offense. They're going to try to duck underneath here. This is Bernard Hayden McDonald yeah. makes a make a swing at it. Which Lucky ball heads out of bounds. Called on the, in the crease there. Three twenty-three left to go here. Fourth quarter. In this semifinal WCLL matchup. Santa Clara with the ball behind, trying to make something happen here. See if they can finish on a strong note. And that ball hitting the turf ain't gonna do it. And there goes Cal Pauly on the break across. And a heck of a save by Miller, boy. I'm telling you. You know, he is going to go home with some bruises tonight. And I know he's probably going to be on the losing end of this contest, but that kid's got to be proud of the way he played. Absolutely. Absolutely. It takes a, uh, well, probably something I can't say on the Internet, because, you know, the Internet is one of the cleaner environments. Oh, absolutely, seen, absolutely. But, you know, it takes a pair of stones to sit in that goal and watch some kid who's already got a hattie on you to wind up and let one ride that's going to be going over 100 miles an hour. And I'm telling you, Miller stood there like a statue. He did not flinch an inch. He's a Bellarmine product as well. Yeah. That's Gosling with the ground ball on the failed clear. And now they settle in for 223 left in the game. And they're just probably going to try to ride this one out as much as they possibly can, knowing full well that they've got a tough Cal team to face tomorrow. Because, Mike, I think it's safe to say that they're That's probably going to start looking ahead here. For sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, Cal's probably already uh, just pulling into uh, their campus. They had a day off from mm -hmm. Saturday. The D2 games will, will commence tomorrow. And then we'll have Championship Sunday for both uh, D1, D2. Yeah, and that's what aims to be a good matchup. I think the first time they met this season was uh, not entirely a close game, but I think that these uh, after this performance, your Cal Poly Mustangs think that they've probably got an equal to the task this time. Another save by Miller. Yeah. And with 134 and left to go. What do you know? gockhale has got the ball. Covered closely behind by Del, Bi Del Biagio. Now that's Mustang swing the ball back up top. 120 left to go in the game. And now I think it looks like the Mustangs are probably just going to maybe take a couple more swipe bites at the apple as they try to get it down to the into the goal mouth. Ball's bouncing around a little bit here in the last couple seconds of the game. We're under a minute to go. Ball at X. Cal Poly's number 32. Trey Chambers moving the ball around. Yep. And it heads out of bounds. So with 47 seconds left in the game, Santa Clara will probably get at least one more possession. Maybe they can make something good happen this last bit. So at least leave the game with a positive taste in their mouths. After what has been a tough offensive game for them. Yeah, very frustrating. I think... Uh I think this is a young program. They're going to build on a lot. I mean, you got Miller in the pipes as a freshman. Um, got Collier on the other side as a freshman. This is, uh, you're going to see the Broncos again. Yeah, I know we were talking to Coach Greg Mangus before the game, and he was really excited, not about this, this team right now, but what the future holds for this team. Oh, the one-hander. Collier <laughs> trying everything on his tool of trying his bag of tricks to try to make something happen. Yeah. Flag is down, but you know what? I think that's going to do it for us here, Coach Mike. And Shot, it will. And that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, your final. The Cal Poly Mustangs 10, Santa Clara Broncos 4. Cal Poly will advance to play the University of California Berkeley Golden Bears in Sunday's championship game for the Western Collegiate Lacrosse League. Mike, probably, if you had to guess, when we first sat down here tonight, who was going to be winning, making it out of semifinal 
Friday. I think those might have been the two teams you would have picked. Uh, I think Vegas had the line for sure on this one, and, uh, you know, it was proven again. You know, two Goliath teams, um, you know, Cal, not surprising, uh, running away with the WCLL. They're, they're definitely going to be on there Sunday. But, uh, you know, Cal Poly, veteran squad, well coached. But, hey, I, I like the Broncos. I loved what I saw with them, young team on the rise. Sonoma State, you know, I think that was just a just a hiccup. Yeah. So, yeah. Are you surprised? I mean, this is a one-goal game the last two teams time these two teams met with uh, Santa Clara coming out ahead with one. Are you surprised with how much that uh, Cal Poly dominated this game? I am. I, I You know, I like I said, I was real excited in the beginning to see this back and forth, and then it just was like they flipped the switch. And it sure started out that way. We Absolutely. were at the two to one at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, no, it was it was fun to watch, and I thought, well, this this could be a good one because we did not expect uh, you know Cal to bully uh, Sonoma as much as they did. But uh, this is exactly what this game turned out to be. Was it muscle? Yeah, you know what? As much as we like to talk about offense in this game, is goal scorer and Keaton Collier and the great things he's done as a freshman. Credit the Cal Poly defense today; just absolutely suffocated the Cal uh, the uh, Santa Clara offense. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Tooney, you know, he's a young young player. He's uh he's going to definitely uh, have big things in his career. But the game plan was 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 well written. Uh, Coach DeBreo and his staff obviously researched this uh, to the to the fullest. Um, I think they'll be obviously you know staying up here tonight, whereas uh, Cal went home. Uh, does that have a factor in Sunday's game? I don't know. You know what? How can you know? You're not a you're not a wizard. You can't see into the future. Well, I played D and D for a little while. That's true. Those dodecahedron dice, boy, they're the <laughs> way to go. And there. That's how you wrap up a broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. You yeah. throw out a dodecahedron reference, and oh, uh, all is good. So that is it for tonight. Your final score again, Cal Poly Mustangs 10, your Santa Clara Broncos 4. Uh, Santa, uh, Cal Poly will advance to Championship Sunday for WCLL. This is Dave Almey, your play-by-play guru. <laughs> I'm joined here by Mike Lanilow of Lantier for Culling Commentary. We've enjoyed being with you tonight. Thanks for welcoming us into your home through the Internet. Usually a terrifying thing when you think about that prospect, but we've enjoyed the time. Here, here. Thanks so much, and we will talk to you again on Sunday. Good night.